Hello everybody, welcome to the Dev Environment. I am Charlie, I'm your host. And last time we talked about getting started with React Native. Um, and today we are gonna talk about Expo Router, specifically a quick start that I created called Expo Router TypeScript, just because uh, a lot of the current quick starts didn't have TypeScript support, didn't have Jest, didn't have all this stuff configured that just makes this a lot easier to use. Um, so I created this repository. I will link it down below, but it is the dev environment slash expo router TypeScript. And so if you just click on this code and you copy this here, and then you go to your command line and type git clone and then paste that link, um, then you'll pull this repo. And so how does it work? Well, um, there's an app directory here and this app directory works a lot like how Next.js works, where your default uh, index file um, is your index route, um, and then any index file in any folder structure uh, will be part of the path. So for example, here I have second, and so what that's gonna look like, if I just run it on web here, is that when you go to slash second, you're gonna see, um, the second screen and the first screen. Um, so this first screen is the root level index on the app directory, and the second screen is the second app right there. Cool. So uh, you're gonna notice when you click on these files, there's also an in uh, a layout.tsx. So that layout is going to be, you can put these layouts in any folder, and essentially what it is is they're like a page wrapper um, for any of things. So if you wanted to add, um, certain things like, for example, let's say you needed Redux at the root of your application or context or anything like that, um, or you wanted to create like a basic page container styling, um, maybe like set a background color or, or uh, you know, set padding or anything like this. Um, this is what these layout routes are really great for. So you'll notice in the app directory itself, all of the routes are basically just exporting a component from somewhere else. So here, source screen second on the index route, source screens home, and on the layouts, it's source layouts root layout. And that is because I like to keep everything in the source directory rather than put them all in this app directory. I like to keep things organized um, because the app directory, every component that's in here is gonna be converted to a route. So you don't really wanna put your components there because otherwise it's gonna create a route slash components, da 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 right? So I just keep the app directory just strictly as um, just the page routing itself. And then all of the code more or less lives in the source directory here. So um, you'll see source screens home. So if you go to the screens, then we have home, um, and then on the second uh, index route here, source screen second, so we have the second route. So all of the screen components are here. There's a components directory, which I uh, created just two basic components, like a link button and a spinner. Um, and then in the hooks, uh, I created an app loading hook, which is loaded in the root layout. So use app loading. Um, and what this will do is this is a great place to put um, any caching you want to create for your application. So here, for example, I use uh, Expo Font has a exported use fonts hook. Um, and this one, you can just pass in an object um, with a bunch of fonts, like custom fonts that you want to add to your application. So for example, I just have Helvetica just, just to show. Um, and then when this fonts um, hook has completed loading, then this fonts uh, variable will be set to true and it sets set app loading to true and then your app will know that it's ready to go. Um, I also just did just this little CSS injection here. So it's like if it's web, so in a use memo, we use the platform.os and we're just checking if it's web here. Um, then it's just going to inject some CSS into the application if it's web only. And the reason we want to do that is because it's document.body.style and the document doesn't exist on native. It only exists on web. So we just do a quick check and uh, we put this in. And so what does this do? Um, this is just going to set the height of uh, your application to essentially 100 view height. Um, but it's kind of like a little hack that I found one time that is pretty useful because uh, if you're on mobile Safari, for example, you'll notice that the toolbar kind of like pops in and out um, when you scroll the page. And so uh, this little hack just makes sure that 100 view height 
uh, is 100 view height, whether the, the, uh, the URL bar is visible or not. So it's pretty cool. Um, so that's pretty much it. I just, I recommend that you just take a look at this and just kind of see what you think. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, but at the same time, I also just wanted to show a library that I really like, and it's called React Native Animatable. And uh, what I like about it is that this library um, simplifies the act of animating things in React Native. Um, because animations in React Native um, can take a lot of math work. Uh, they're all done programmatically. Um, and even just getting like simple animations, like something to like pop in or, or slide in um, can take some time. And, and it takes a lot of like ab ability to, you know, just kind of tweak things. And, and so rather than spending all that effort, I just want to show you this library because it is awesome. So React Native Animatable here um, gives you, if you scroll down on this page, um, once again, it's Oblador, Oblador, <laughs> slash React Native Animatable. If you just Google React Native Animatable, you will find it. And I'll also just post it down below in the description. Um, but these are all the animations that are available. And there is a bunch of them. And they are really cool. Um, and so basically, it's pretty easy. So here, you'll see that basically, uh, we just import React Native Animatable, and it'll export a bunch of components that are default to React Native. So like, for example, like view um, or text, uh, I think like, uh, maybe it's just a, a small handful, I guess it's, it's, it's not like a full comprehensive thing, but mainly it's gonna be text. I think it's image as well. Um, yeah, so you have image, text, view, just the kind of core things. Um, view alone is enough <laughs> because you can just wrap any component inside of an animatable view um, and then you'll have the full functionality of this. So, um, but I'm just going to do a text just to show you because here on the page, we have a really basic page, right? We just have the second screen and the first screen. And so um, basically we import this text. If you're using styled components, um, then all you do is you replace what normally would be styled.text with styled and then wrap it um, in uh, circle braces and then put text here. Um, and then this will make it an animatable component. If you're just using it on the basic page itself, um, then you would just call it text and it would reference the imported text here. If you are also using a text from React Native, which sometimes happens um, from React Native, then all you gotta do is just alias one of them. So like you can make this RN text and then just use RN text when you need the standard React Native, um, Re React Native or if you wanna use the animatable version, you can alias that as well. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, but here I'm just gonna actually just kind of step back and I'm just gonna keep my s.text, um, which is my styled component text component here. Um, and then what you can do, um, oh, sorry, actually I did it in title, not on text. So here on title here. And then, so see, it takes it in this animation prop. And so right now I have it as in bounce in and down. And it also takes, uh, it can take a duration prop. There's a lot of like, um, if you actually go back to the documentation here, you'll see that um, not only is there duration, but there's direction, excuse me, there's delay, um, there's all kinds of like these customization things like transition and then there's like hooks for when the animation starts, when the animation ends, if you wanna do state updates with it. So that's why I absolutely love this library just cause like it provides you with all the functionality you need. Um, so duration, like if I just set it, I think by default it's a thousand. Let me just double check here. Duration default is a thousand. So that's a thousand milliseconds, so one second. Um, and then when you go to the page, um, and just refresh, you'll see that the animation kind of does like this cool drop in. And so I can tweak this so we can make this like 5,000, for example, if you want to just see it kind of, oops, sorry, I refreshed it again, just kind of see it come in slow and stuff. The other cool part is that this totally works uh, in the iOS simulator, um, which I don't know if I have open, but 
let's just pop it open here. Um, and so it works the exact same way. Um, so that's native and web support, which can sometimes be a little bit hard. Uh, oftentimes you just have to import a library and just see if it works for both. But this one is a great one that works for both. So if you want to see what you can do with it, then once again, if we kind of come back to Pazak here um, and we go to select character, you'll see that the <laughs> characters kind of slide in. I'm literally just using React Native Animatable. Um, and so I think it's in fading entrances, fading entrances here. Um, so you can see them kind of like slide in from fade in left or fade in right. So that's literally all that's happening here. It's just a fade in left or a fade in right. Really creates a cool effect. Also on the game, so the pop-up um, and then, or the modal there. And then also when the cards kind of slide in, that's literally just using <laughs> a fade in effect as well. And so how cool is it that you can kind of create um, this almost like game-like animation effect just using this library and it's so easy to use. So React Native Animatable, absolutely love it. Um, just animation bounce in and duration uh, to set the duration. You can also just leave it out. All you really need is just this animation prop. Um, so yeah, so if you have time, head over to GitHub, go to the Dev Environment Expo Router TypeScript um, and give it a try. Just tell me what you think. Um, I put a lot of scripts in there for you. Um, so you can basically do all the things that you're going to need to do eventually anyway. So like build a Android APK, build your iOS, build web. Um, we have this dev script, which is just running start, which is just expo start. Um, so you can run npm start or npm run dev, whichever you prefer. Um, I have format here. So prettier is installed. So uh, it'll auto format all your files to make them, you know, match whatever you want. If you want to customize it, there's this prettier RC file and you can go ahead and just change any of those things. If you don't like having arrow parentheses or um, if you want to do JSX with double quotes, whatever, it's your choice. Um, as well, uh, ESLint is built in. So there's a lint and lint fix. Um, this offline command is really cool. Um, basically what it does is it allows you to run expo uh, if you don't have an internet connection um, so this is handy if you're ever on an airplane which i love to code when i'm on flights so offline is really cool um, we also have a publish expo which uses the eas cli which we'll talk about in a future video um, publish web uh, which i'm using firebase here but you can replace this with any script you want i just love firebase hosting because it is free uh, for static builds but this builds out to static uh, when we run npm run uh, or npm build web um, then it outputs a static build of the site sorry to the web build directory um, you can also serve the app and serve the web um, and then we have just testing and I wrote some tests for you as well. Uh, if you just want to see kind of like how you would do just testing uh, with React Native and Expo, pretty much does 90% <laughs> of the getting started. Uh, it's basically just up to you at this point to build an app that you're interested in. So um, feel free to check it out. I Once again, everything's in the description. I want to thank you for watching this video. Click like, and if you want to subscribe and you're not subscribed, then please do. Um, I try to do coding tutorials and I am in love with Expo and React Native. So if you are the same and you want to learn about building web apps and native apps, please subscribe to the page. It helps us out a lot. Um, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.